G.I. Joe, fighting man from head to toe, on the land, on the sea, in the air. When G.I. Joe first burst onto the toy scene in 1964, he was an instant hit with every boy across America. The initial range of G.I. Joe action figures and accessories were a celebration of the US military service personnel of World War II. In fact, during the first two years of G.I. Joe, every toy product manufactured was based on American servicemen and covered the Army, Navy, Marines and Air Force. These products were a sweeping success and Hasbro's designers wanting to expand the range, decided to bring an international flavour to the toy line. Introduced in 1966, the Action Soldiers of the World series brought us six highly detailed foreign soldiers from both sides of the World War II conflict. This was not only a very ambitious extension to the G.I. Joe product line, but also a risky one. And although these figures are popular with collectors today, back in 1966, they weren't the commercial success that Hasbro had hoped for. Hello G.I. Joe fans, my name is Tony and welcome back to the Analog Toys YouTube channel and the feature of today's vintage toy review, the G.I. Joe Action Soldiers of the World. Hasbro's range of G.I. Joe Action Soldiers of the World included the German and Japanese soldiers who represented the Axis forces, and the British Commando, French Resistance Fighter, Russian Infantry and Australian Jungle Fighter, representing the Allied forces. Now, a new world of fun with G.I. Joe Action Soldiers of the World. Six different fighting men from six foreign countries. Australian jungle fighter, Russian infantryman, British commando, Japanese imperial soldier, German infantryman, French underground fighter. The G.I. Joe Combat Series. Realistic in every detail, from the uniforms on their backs to the medals on their chests. Add new realism, new dimension to your play battle. Add new fun to your world of G.I. Joe with the exciting Action Soldiers of the World. Boy, oh boy, the Hasbro toy! All six Soldiers of the World debuted at once and were available in a variety of different packages, including a deluxe window box, a narrow box that included the figure and uniform only, and a separate smaller card back that included the various pieces of weapons and equipment. The Action Soldiers of the World concept was not an easy one to get off the ground, and developing this range became a little battle of its own. For starters, finding original, authentic World War II uniforms proved much more difficult than first expected. Also, the inclusion of the German Stormtrooper sparked heated debate between senior members of Hasbro's management. Some executives felt that no toy company, especially one with the Jewish heritage of Hasbro, should commemorate the Nazis. The problem was debated at length and the German Stormtrooper finally stayed in the range after executives were persuaded that the German soldier was part of a line of products and Hasbro couldn't accurately represent the various nations that fought in World War II without including a soldier from a key country such as Germany. Strangely though, no one objected to the inclusion of a Japanese Imperial soldier, but this wasn't the case when English toy company Palatoy used the Hasbro license to introduce the soldiers of the world into the Action Man brand range. When issued in 1967, Palatoy dropped the Japanese soldier from the line and replaced it with the American Green Beret. One of the most unique aspects of Hasbro's Soldiers of the World is the head sculpts on the figures. Rather than utilising the traditional G.I. Joe head sculpt with a classic scar on his cheek, a more Nordic looking sculpt was designed for use with five of the foreign soldiers, with the Japanese soldier sporting a totally unique face sculpt with Asian features. Although the German and Japanese soldiers represented the Axis forces of World War II, Hasbro never intended to market any of these figures as an enemy of G.I. Joe. All of the soldiers of the world were treated equally in all advertising, and no reference was ever made to an enemy. The German soldier was initially called the German Stormtrooper, however that name proved too controversial in the US and was dropped from the toy packaging. Despite being the ultimate bad guy, Hasbro's German soldier came with a beautifully tailored woolen uniform and a unique helmet design, and was armed with a Luger pistol, MP40 machine pistol, and two potato masher grenades. As with all the soldiers of the world figures, the German came with a counterintelligence manual and a medal for gallantry, in this case, the Iron Cross. On the other hand, the Japanese Imperial soldier not only has a totally unique face, 
but he also came equipped with a visually striking uniform. Armed with the Arisaka rifle and bayonet and the Nambu pistol, the Japanese soldier also sported a pair of jungle trousers and a jungle tunic, all topped off with his signature helmet and Order of Kite medal. The first two figures released in catalogue order represented the Axis forces of World War II, with the German soldier being my personal favourite of the entire vintage G.I. Joe line. But what of the Allied troops? The Russian infantryman is decked out for winter warfare on the Western Front. Dressed in riding boots and jodhpurs, the Russian wore a woolen tunic with Order of Lenin medal and a fur hat with metallic badge. The infantryman was also heavily armed, carrying the DP light machine gun and ammo case, along with two anti-tank grenades. On the other hand, the fabled French resistance fighter carried much smaller caliber weaponry in the form of the Mars submachine gun and the Lebel revolver. The reason the Frenchman was equipped with smaller weapons was so he could carry the extra weight of his Morse code radio. And with his fighting knife and hand grenades, the resistance fighter is always ready to disrupt the German supply lines. In my opinion, the French resistance fighter is a decent enough effort by Hasbro, but I also can't deny the fact that it's a little bit underwhelming when compared with the rest of the set. Kind of like the weakest link in the chain, so to speak. But at least the British commando more than made up for it. With his traditional battle dress uniform, the British commando wore the rank of a lance corporal in the British Army, and was adorned with the typical doughboy styled helmet. The best accessory of the bunch is the gas mask. Authentically styled with its own carrying case, the mask has clear plastic lenses and twin filtration canisters. The British commando is also armed with a Sten gun and his tunic is adorned with the Victoria Cross medal. Finally, the Australian jungle fighter comes loaded down with weapons and equipment. From his machete and knuckle knife to his flamethrower and hand grenades, this beautiful action figure has one of the best tailored uniforms of the entire G.I. Joe range. The jungle fighter set included a campaign hat to complement the bush jacket, shorts and high socks. The Australian also carried an entrenching tool and wore the same medal as the British Commando, the Victoria Cross. The complete collection of Hasbro's G.I. Joe's Action Soldiers of the World is a joy to behold, and the level of detail and accuracy is truly commendable. But these sets didn't sell that well back in 1966. One of the reasons for their limited success was the anti-war sentiment growing across the country as a direct result of the Vietnam War. The parents of the 60s began boycotting all forms of war-themed toys. Another reason was that many of the same parents had either served in the Second World War or had been personally affected by it, and they were therefore reluctant to purchase toys that brought back harrowing wartime memories. As a result, the Japanese, German and Russian soldiers were the weakest sellers, which is why Hasbro repackaged these three outfits several times in the hopes of dispensing with leftover stock. From a design perspective though, the G.I. Joe Soldiers of the World set is a stunning achievement and Hasbro deserve a lot of credit for the bold choices that they made with this line. Some G.I. Joe enthusiasts also like to include the Canadian Mountie in their Action Soldiers of the World collections. The Mountie certainly seems to fit in with this series, being a genuinely unique international soldier that was also sold in a large deluxe window box. But the Mountie action figure was actually a Sears Roebuck store exclusive, sold in 1967, that was never officially released as part of the Action Soldiers of the World product line. Many collectors view the 1960s as the golden age of the classic G.I. Joe action figure, and the action soldiers of the world are remembered as the pinnacle of this era. With new face sculpts and the most detailed uniforms ever imagined, they represented some of the most creative work Hasbro had done since the inception of the toy line. I score this complete set of figures 5 out of 5. So that's our review of Hasbro's G.I. Joe's Action Soldiers of the World collection. Did you agree with our score? Please leave us a comment in the section below. And if you like this video, you must subscribe to the Analog Toys YouTube channel to stay up to date with all of our latest vintage toy video uploads. I'm Tony from Analog Toys. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Underwater demolition with G.I. Joe. Action Sailor. Air Force Scramble with G.I. Joe. Action Pilot. Unlike the little soldiers you used to play with, G.I. Joe is almost a foot tall. He moves just the way you do. 21 movable parts, over a thousand fighting positions. And with the authentic G.I. Joe equipment available, you can bring a new kind of realism to playing soldier.
Get G.I. Joe in the basic uniform and start collecting your G.I. Joe equipment today. It's a Hasbro toy.